Hello, how are you doing today? I'm Jenna Lynn Roberts with Present Path Tarot, and today I'm going to give a review from a professional psychic tarot reader of the new movie Call Me Miss Cleo on HBO Max, directed by Celia Aniskovich and Jennifer Brea. I'm going to try my best not to give any spoilers on this, but some of these things are kind of well known. Step out of the darkness and into the light. Let me illuminate your path with a reading now. I really enjoyed this movie. I was going to include clips from it, but HBO Max has a way that it blocks screen recording, which respect, I get it. So instead, I'm just gonna kind of share my own thoughts about it. And I welcome you to write in the comments um, while I'm talking or you know afterward about your own thoughts around the movie itself as a review or your own experiences with Psychic Readers Network or your own thoughts around Miss Cleo or psych being a psychic in general. I really appreciated that this film did a good job of honoring Miss Cleo and showing that she was more than just a persona on late night television. Um, I was really worried when this thing came out. I was like, oh no, this is just going to be another media attack on psychics and mediums and tarot readers that were just weirdos, woo, and that were shysters and, you know, charlatans. And it gets really tiresome. You know, people have been criticized and jabbed at and talked about throughout the ages for having different beliefs. And apparently I am no exception. Although it is a constant challenge, I will continue. I will not allow them to stop me. It really showed that it wasn't the psychics who were on the phone, many of which weren't psychic because they weren't vetted by the company. It wasn't them who were bad. It wasn't Miss Cleo who was bad, who was taken advantage of by these two white men. It was these people, these two men who were running the Psychic Readers Network, who were raking in dough and then taking collections on people when their kids called. And it really shows that who the bad guy is in a clean way. And at the same time, don't get me wrong, there's tons of scandal going on. So did you know, and this is, shouldn't be a spoiler unless you've been under a rock, Miss Cleo was not Jamaican. She did not have a real Jamaican accent. And I really appreciate that they had a Caribbean expert on the program talking about the nature of what that means when someone puts on that persona in particular for a psychic exoticism factor. I think they did a good job balancing out and talking about who she really was and showing that her persona and who she was have a lot of overlap. I appreciate the nuance with which they brought to this. I have bumper stickers that say, seek nuance. I made myself because I think a lot of my querents need to think about that. Like what is the gray zone. Let's get out of black and white thinking, of right and wrong, of yes and no. Where is the maybe that's healthy? And I really think that the documentary did a great job of showing multifaceted aspects of what was happening with the Psychic Readers Network and with Miss Cleo and showing her as a human. It was neat too to see a tarot reader presented as a legitimate psychic, and she was. I mean, Really, if you watched her stuff, I stayed up late watching that stuff as a kid. And yeah, that was like legit. Like she was saying things that were blowing people's minds. Um, and she was hyper specific sometimes. So I have confidence that from the fact that those were just people calling in, that she was legit. Father had a stroke at a young age, did he not? Right. Did you get strep throat a great deal in your late teen years? Yes, I did. Okay. The people you called when you called the Psychic Readers Network weren't necessarily. Maybe some were, but you got lucky if you, you got lucky if you got a real psychic for that. And I want to share a bit about what was happening here was people taking advantage of people who are vulnerable, who were seeking psychic support. So they put a real psychic on TV and then they had unvetted psychics on the phone lines and who would try and stall to make it so that you would be on the phone longer and pay more money and weren't getting paid very well. And I think it's really important that we look at it's about the people who are trying to make money, but no one in the psychic field was part of that shyster, was part of that game and that that scam. The people who were involved were just two businessmen who knew that they could take advantage of vulnerable people at midnight who were depressed 
and need a friend and need someone to talk to. And I'm so grateful. I mean, I use, so I use the app Marco Polo and I send my friends, if I'm depressed in the middle of the night, I send my friends video chat messages. You can also do this on things like WhatsApp where you can send someone a video of you talking about what you're going through. And it really helps me fall back asleep again, helps me feel loved and held, even if I'm not getting an immediate response. Um, So that's one way I pull through a long night. But I also want to recommend that, you know, you don't call a midnight 1-900 number. (laughs) And no judgment. I've done some things. When you're depressed, you're not making clear choices. And you have to give yourself space and kindness and compassion for that. Please, if you learned anything from this documentary, go and find a vetted psychic tarot reader. Go through the search engines we have, you know, look around at reviews for them. Ask friends, have you seen anyone? Do you like them? What was your experience? And if you do go to a reader and they say, oh, you have a curse on you. You need to give me $3,000 to release your curse. Say, thank you very much. I'd exit quick because I don't think they're going to be giving you legitimate information and go find another reader to ask, am I cursed? I personally, as a reader, think it's ethical of me. I have a list of available therapists in town. I have a list of um, acupuncturists and healers. I have a list of, and you know, I'm not a medical professional. I need to send people to someone who can see a medical professional if they are asking medical questions in a reading. It's not my responsibility to talk about that. We have to have boundaries as readers and ethics as readers and a list of people to send people to. I have a list of some witchy people who can manage curse release, can manage um, entity release. I'm not in charge of that. I'm just here to read the cards, see what I see, and pass you along to the right person who's affordable and vetted. It's a tough thing when someone has like a ghost in their house and they don't know who to go see. And I don't have personally a ghost person. So, you know, in that kind of situation, I'd say, gosh, I don't, I don't, I haven't found that person yet. And if you know someone, tell me, because I'll send them along. It's so important that when you're in that vulnerable state, that you resist going for the uh, most obvious answer, which can be the shyster path, someone who's the charlatan, and not fall into a trap of someone saying to you, you need to give me a lot more money after the start of a reading. Upsells should not be that grandiose. I also just want to say that when I get together with other tarot readers, we talk about ethics a lot. We talk about boundaries, energetic health. We talk about how to take care of our querents in a loving, compassionate way. I don't hang out with anyone as a tarot reader who takes advantage of people in ugly ways. And um, it's sad to me that that's the story that has been created in Hollywood a around who we are is that we're either going to give you terrifying advice about your future, which is just cheap foreshadowing by a screenplay writer. I hope you hear, I hope if you're a screenplay writer and you want to use Tarot, please don't make it about a horrible future. I'm bored. I'm going to start throwing popcorn in the theater. I'm going to start yelling at the screen and just freak out because it is not representative of reality and you're using it for a cheap foreshadowing trick. Get better writing skills get better writing skills. Um, (laughs) Calming down. The power of the tarot cards can turn your fantasies into reality. Call for your tarot reading now. The tarot readers I know are pretty smart people. We like symbology. We like movies and books. We read a lot. A lot of readers in tarot culture. Um, A lot of females. And it's a lot of collaborative sensibility. So we talk to each other and say like, oh, I don't see the card that way, but I like that take on it. And um, listen to each other a lot without telling each other what's up. It's kind of refreshing. And I feel like it's partly because it is such a feminine heavy community. But the men in the community are great too. And I think they evolve into that culture very quickly and easily. Um, So I just, I'm happy that this film did a good job of presenting what I think is a fair interpretation with nuance and multifaceted angles of who Miss Cleo was, of what her persona was about and where that came from of who really was the bad guy in the scenario. And I was really relieved. I even got a little choked up at the end. I really appreciated the end of the film that she said, I'm not here 
to listen to the living. I'm here to listen to the dead, essentially, something like that, because the dead are going to give me far better insights. And I think they have more integrity is what she was saying. And I think she experienced that in her life in a big way. I think she experienced a lot of lack of integrity from humans. And it takes you on another path that I'm not even going to get into because there's great surprises to come in who she was as a human. And I really appreciate they interviewed her friends. They interviewed um, Caribbean experts. They interviewed uh, the psychics who had worked for the Psychic Readers Network and... I think they did a great job. So I want to thank the directors, Jennifer Brea and Celia Aniskovich, for bringing a nuanced, fascinating story to light. And I appreciate you listening to my review of it. If you want a professional reading, please reach out to me at presentpathtarot.com. If you want to learn the cards, please reach out to me. If you just want to learn intuition skills, I can help with that as well and develop your own psychic knowing because we all have it. And I think some of us have just simply learned to access it. So let's all access it because it's a gift. And I think Miss Cleo knew that. I think her friends knew that about her. And I hope you know that about yourself. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe and ding the bell. Please write in the comments your thoughts respectfully about the movie Call Me Miss Cleo, about psychics and your experiences, about your own psychic gift, and about how tarot readers and psychics are portrayed in the media, because I think we need to have more of a group discussion about this. And thank you for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful week. All right, Miss Cleo. All right, baby. I love you. Take care of yourself, huh? Thank you so much. Bye-bye, baby. Bye-bye.